I want to show you how to make a, a calculated field in an AXIS query. This will work in AXIS 2016, AXIS 2013, 2010, and 2007. All right, so here we have some tables. Uh, let's make a new query. So I'll pick on the Create menu up top, and on the Create menu, we'll pick on Query Design. And let's say we want to use the Orders table as an example. We're going to add some fields. I'll add uh, order ID, customer ID, employee ID, order date. Uh, I'll have the, um, the ship date. And I'll have the freight field. And we'll have the order amount. Now you can pick as many fields as you wanted to to make the query. Now I'm going to close this window over here so we have some more room. And you can see the fields that we chose over here. Let's go ahead and run the query. Up here, we'll pick on Run. And you see the fields that we selected. All right, so let's make a calculated field. I want to see how many days it took to ship that order. So um, we'll go back to Design View. All right. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to your next field. See how I'm on the next field right there. And then you go into something that's called the Expression Builder. You can go to the Builder up here. Or if you click on that pull down on that field, then, or if you right click on it, if you right click on that field, then I can pick on the builder there. Either way is good. Now, what we want to do is um, actually, I want to save the query first, and I'll show you why. The fields did not land over here. So I'll pick on the word cancel, and I'm going to save the query first. So I'll pick on save, and we'll give the query a name. I'll call this um, QRY Calculated Fields. Good. Now, let me show you what happens when we save the query. Now, I'm going to click on that same field. I'm going to right click on it and go back to the builder. Notice now the field names are there. Now, I can double click on the field names. So, I'm going to double click on the um, ship date. Now you could have typed that in, but I just think it's easier to double click on the field. And then notice how I'll put the field names in brackets. So uh, here's a general rule. When you have one of these formulas, the field name has to be in brackets or it should be. I'm going to type in a minus sign and I'll double click on order date. So you're going to use the field names in the formula. Otherwise the math is similar to what you might do in Excel. So uh, I have the ship date minus the order date. When you subtract two dates from each other, it's going to give us the difference in days. Now let's go ahead and run that. And we have expression one and we have the number of days. Let's see if it's right. 816 minus 84 is going to be 12 days. Notice how it says expression one. Let's fix that. So instead of, uh, see how it says the expression one right there. I'm going to change that to the word days. So days to ship is fine. Anything before the colon right there is the field name. Anything after the colon is the formula. So let's go ahead and run that again. And now we have the days to ship. Let me show you some more examples of your calculations. We're going to go to the next field. I want to calculate the sales tax. So let's say we're going to go with 6% uh, times the order amount. So I'm going to right click on the next blank field and we'll go back to the builder again. Or you could have picked the word builder up there. Good. Now watch what I'll do. I'll double click where it says order amount times 6%. So you're just using uh, the field name in the formula and then you can use your basic math from there. I'll pick on OK. Now let's go ahead and run that. Now, it doesn't like the 6% in this case, so we'll have to do it the other way. We'll do, um, I say, times uh, 0 0.06. We'll be fine. And when I run that, all right, so notice how it says expression 1. I want to change that field name. Notice how they all have like three decimal places. Here's one with one decimal place and so on. I want to fix the format of that field, so we'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. First of all, let's change the field name. I'm going to uh, highlight the field name and I'll type in sales tax. Remember, what's before the comma is the, um, I mean, what's before the colon is the field name. What's after the colon is the formula. 
Let's see if that fixed that. Good. Now uh, it says sales tax. Now let's go back to design view. Here's how to change the format of a field here in a query. I'm going to click a right click on that field and I'll pick in the word properties. Then we have the property sheet. The property sheet is just for that one field. So I'll pick on um, the decimal places. No, I'll pick on format and I'll make that a currency data type. And then it should have two decimal places after that. Let's see if it fixed it. Good. So now it has two decimal places. It looks a lot better. So when you want to change the format of a field, you pick on the field down here and then you open up the property sheet and that was called the format. We can change the decimal places. Now I want to show, I want to now add the freight plus the order amount plus the sales tax to get to the line total. So let me click on the next field and we'll right click on that and we'll pick on build. Notice how the sales tax is not there yet. So this, is where it becomes really important to save your query. I'll pick on cancel. I'm going to go ahead and save the query. Now, if I go to the next field and right click and pick on the word build, now the word sales tax is there. So you can see it's really important to save your query if you want to use those previous fields. In this case, I'll double click on order amount plus the freight plus the sales tax. So these can be really simple formulas and they can be really complicated formulas as well. Now, uh, if I expand the word functions, then you're going to see that Access has a lot of built in functions that you can use in your formulas as well. There's some of the ones that are similar to what might appear in uh, Excel and there's some new ones that are just specific to Access as well. But notice how I picked on functions. Then I picked on built in functions and any one of those can be used in your formula as well. So the formula can be really simple or really complicated. Now, in this case, if I want to see my fields again, I'll pick on the name of the query and then I see the name of all my fields. Now, maybe we can make a more advanced video. If I want to use something that's actually in the database, then I'm going to expand the database name right there. Then I can use things from tables and queries and forms and reports. So we can really start to get pretty complicated. Maybe we'll do that in another video. All right, so the, the formula can be simple or complicated. You're just going to use your field names in the formula, and then the math is kind of the same as what you might see in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now it says expression one. I know I want to change that. So I'm going to highlight that expression one, and I'll type in line total. Let's go ahead and run that. And the line total is looking good. So we did the sales tax, the days to ship. Let's see if we can do a formula that would be uh, with a, a, a function. All right, so I'm gonna go back to design view. What if I just wanted to get the first couple characters of the ship country? So I'm going to double click on ship country and that'll put that into my, um, into my list over here. So I'll run that and we see the sh ship countries over here. What if I just wanted to the, uh, the first two letters of each country? So I'm going to go back to design view and I'll do another formula. Now I know I have to save it, right? We, we already learned that lesson. So I'll pick on save and I'll go to the next blank field. I'm going to right click there and pick on build. Good. Now, I want to show you just an example of these built-in functions. I'll pick on functions, built-in functions. Now, here's the alphabetical list of all of them, and then they're also listed by category as well. So in this case, I'm looking for the one that's called left, and that'll be the left part of, the, uh, of a text string. Now, you see these ones with the dollar signs? Those are kind of legacy uh, formulas. You don't have to use those anymore. Just use the ones that have the word without the dollar sign. Those would be more current. So I'll double click on the word left. Now, by the way, you can always pick on help and see what these functions uh, do as well. The string is going to be the, um, the country field. So look what I'm doing. I'll pick on the word string. I'll pick on the query so I can see my field names and I'll double click on country. Good. Now the length is going to be two. I want the first two characters from the country. So I'm saying left open parentheses, 
Notice how the field name is in brackets, ship country, comma two, close parentheses. So they really do work a lot like Excel functions, except here there's probably different ones that are in Excel, but the, the concept is the same. Uh, in your functions, we also have constants, operators, common expressions. So you can really start to do some nice things with these formulas and make it as simple or as complicated as you need it to be. That was called a built-in function. And you can see there's many, many of those. Really, you can just pick any one of those and then pick on help and get more help about that. So at this point, I'll click on OK. Let's go ahead. Uh, of course, I want to change the um, field name. So in this case, I'm going to highlight where it says expression one. And I'll change that to say abbreviation will be fine. And now I'll run that. And now I have the ship country. And then I also have the abbreviation. So hopefully you got some ideas of how to start to build your calculations in a um, query. Now I'm going to go ahead and save that query and we'll put that away.